Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a brand new mini PC from Menace Forum. And in my opinion, it's actually the best looking mini PC that they've released so far. This is known as the Menace Forum Nook G5, and the size on this thing is only 0.7 liters small. And like I mentioned, I personally think it's the best looking mini PC that they've released so far due to the fact that the whole thing is made of real carbon fiber. This isn't a plastic overlay or anything like that. It's made of real carbon fiber and uh, all of these sheets are put together here with some hex hardware. So it's actually really high quality. I love the minimalistic design. Inside of the box, obviously we're gonna get the mini PC itself. It also comes with a 120 watt power supply, HDMI cable, and our power cord for that power supply. Plus they include an Allen key to disassemble the PC and get down to the RAM and the storage in this unit. Taking a look at the I.O., up front here we've got two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports and a 3.5mm audio jack. Not much happening around the sides here. We've got a lot of ventilation with this carbon fiber case, but moving around back, you can see that we've got two full-size HDMI ports. We've also got 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, another USB 3.2 Gen 2 port full-size and USB 2.0. Plus, we've got two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the rear of this unit, and they are 40 gig ports, so it will support an eGPU. Another thing I actually like about this design is the cooler they chose to use with this CPU. We can actually run this up to 65 watts from the BIOS, and it's not going to thermal throttle at all. You can run this all day long with the massive cooler they have here, given the CPU they chose to use. Getting inside to upgrade the RAM and storage is really easy. It uses SODIMM RAM. We've got 32 gigs here and a 2280 PCIe 3.0 M.2 drive. As for the specs of the Nook G5, for the CPU, we've got the Intel i5-1240P. This has 12 cores and 16 threads, 4 performance cores up to 4.4 GHz, and 8 efficiency cores up to 3.3. And we can get those clocks out of this thing, given that we can run it up to 65 watts. Built-in Intel Iris Xe graphics with 80 execution units at 1300 MHz. This utilizes SODIMM DDR4 RAM. You can go up to 64 GB, but it's kind of limited at 3200 MHz. We've got one M.2 2280 PCIe 3.0 M.2 SSD that we can add here. And we're going to be running Windows 11. And we're going to be running Windows 11 on this mini PC. Okay, so I've got everything set up. I've installed a bunch of applications that we're going to be testing now. And uh, the first thing I wanted to take a look at was just the TDP here. Now from the BIOS, I've actually gone up to 65 watts. On the CPU side of things, with the 1240p, basically it's going to max out at around 45 watts. So we're right there, 46, 47. But as soon as I put a stress on that GPU also, we can go real close to 65 watts with this unit and the built-in cooler can definitely handle it. So when it comes to using something like this as an everyday PC, really smooth operation here. Uh, I wanna take a look at some YouTube video playback. We'll do some 4K playback. And with these Intel chips, I've always had really good luck. Go full screen, stats for nerds. And we'll make sure we're at 4K. Give it a second to buffer out. But this should offer some really smooth 4K60 playback. And we're actually using 4K60 HDR from YouTube. This little setup is awesome. And like I said, one of my favorite looking PCs. Love that carbon fiber case we've got here. It's nice and quiet even at this kind of wattage. And while we're doing 4K video, this is only going to go up to around 16 watts maximum. Two drop frames on the initial load in. It's going to handle it. Whether you want to stream from YouTube, Netflix, HBO, or uh, external or internal media, it'll do 4K really well. The next thing I wanted to take a look at were a few benchmarks I ran. And the first one here is Geekbench 6, single core, 1324, multi, 7871. Next up, we've got some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark, Night Raid coming in with 15,472. With Firestrike, we got a 3,898, and finally, Time Spy with a 1,498. So yeah, these integrated graphics are definitely falling far behind our DNA 2 based APUs, but remember, we do have Thunderbolt 4 here, so we can connect an eGPU. But I wanted to test a few games on these internal graphics. So the first one here is GTA 5, starting out light, but we get great performance with this one. 1080p, normal settings, I know it's an older one, but it's still fun to play. We're getting an average of 73 FPS, and if you needed a little more out of it, you could always drop it down to 900p. Oh, 
Next up, we've got Injustice 2. With this one, I did drop it down to 900 P so we could do a medium low mix. It'll do 1080 at low if you want to, but we're in a constant 60 here. I also tested Street Fighter 5, another one that'll run at medium settings 1080p. Taking it up a little bit to Cyberpunk 2077, 720p, low settings, and I know we're not at 60, but this was still pretty impressive to see. We got an average of 42 FPS out of this game. I was actually expecting to see a dip under 30 with this 1240p, but I was pleasantly surprised here to see what this thing can do. It's not top the line, but you could get by playing this game. And the final one I tested here was Spider-Man Miles Morales. Again, this one is just hit or miss on integrated graphics. Sometimes it works great, sometimes it falls on its face. We're getting an average of 37 FPS with this. I would have loved to see a little more out of it, but this is even with resolution scale set to performance, and uh, we could go with FSR or XESS, but I'm using the built-in scaling mode that they have with this game. When it comes to the integrated graphics, yeah, I mean, we can get some gaming out of the way, but it's not phenomenal. I mean, we're not going to be doing mini AAA games at 1080p or even 1440p. But luckily, we've got those two full function Thunderbolt 4 ports around back, which allows us to easily connect an eGPU. So what I've got here is the Razer Core dock, and I'm just using a 3080 Ti because it was already in here. I usually recommend something like an RTX 3060 non-Ti variant to keep the price down, but this was already set up. If you take a look here, we've still got access to the built-in Intel Iris Xe graphics, but uh, for all of the gaming now, we're going to be using this external RTX 3080 Ti. And the first game is going to be God of War. So here it is at high settings, 1440p, and we can get an average over 100 FPS. Now I'll tell you, on the integrated graphics, we can run this with FSR set to performance, low settings, and uh, at 720p, with an average of around 36 FPS. So yeah, I mean, we've significantly increased the GPU performance of this mini PC here. And like I mentioned, I don't recommend a high-end GPU like this. A 3060 is more than enough for Thunderbolt 4 support. I wanted to test one more here, so I just went back to Cyberpunk 2077 because we already saw this running on the integrated graphics, but now we've got this at high settings, 1440p, and we can get an average of around 81 FPS. Now, Thunderbolt is limiting this uh, RTX 3080. It does offer a lot more when it's connected in a real PCIe X16 slot, but there's no doubt that connecting this external GPU to the Nook G5 just made it a real gaming PC. Another thing I always like to take a look at with these mini PCs is total system power consumption. This can be very important to a lot of people, and with this you gotta remember that I had the TDP from the BIOS set at 65 watts, but at idle we only pulled 8 watts from the wall using a kilowatt meter. Average gaming jumps up to around 51, and the maximum that I could get this to pull from the wall with that TDP set at 65 watts while maxing out the CPU and GPU was 78 watts, which is quite high, but the cooler in here definitely keeps this thing nice and chilly, even at that 65 watt TDP. And just to give you an idea, that's another thing I always like to log. At idle, we're around 39 degrees Celsius. Average gaming, it only jumped up to 51 degrees Celsius. And remember, we're using the integrated graphics, so that's also pushing power to the die there. And even after running Cinebench R23 for the full 10 minute test, it only hit 83 degrees Celsius. So yeah, I mean, the cooling system that they chose to use here is awesome. I'm really glad they chose that pretty big cooler when it comes to the CPU here. It does a great job keeping this thing nice and chilly. Overall, really digging the design of this mini PC. We could definitely hope for a little more GPU performance, but you know, if you're not looking to game on this thing, then this is something that I could recommend. If you wanted to pick this up for everyday work, 4K video playback, build a little media center, or even an emulation system, then this little system would truck right along. And as you saw, with an external GPU connected over one of those Thunderbolt 4 ports, I mean, we can really turn this into a gaming machine. But in the end, it's always up to you. If you're interested in learning a little more about this, I'll leave some links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this PC, just let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.